Welcome to Lesson 3 of the Physics 30 Prep Fast Track. Uh, in this lesson we'll look at speed and velocity and position time graphs. Speed and velocity are often used to describe the same thing, but there is an important difference between them. First, to define them, speed is found by measuring the distance traveled and dividing that distance by the time taken for travel. So speed is distance over time. Uh, we often see the formula written uh, s is equal to d over t. Uh, in physics, uh, we usually use v is equal to d over t. The v stands for speed, or the v can also stand for velocity. Velocity is found by measuring the displacement and dividing the displacement by the time taken for travel. And so it's essentially the same formula only instead of the D standing for distance, it stands for displacement. Now you can see that we have drawn a little arrow above the V in the velocity equation. The V, the little arrow indicates direction. All right. Notice that in the speed equation there is no arrow, there is no direction given, but in the velocity equation there is an arrow over the velocity, there's also an arrow over the displacement, and we'll explain that in just a moment. But the equations are basically the same form. Uh, v is equal to d over t, and v can stand for both speed and velocity. Let's look at some examples of how they are similar and how they are different. So the big difference between speed and velocity comes from the difference between distance and displacement. Distance is a scalar. Scalars have no direction. Time and money are examples of scalars. Uh, money cannot have direction. Temperature is another example of a scalar. You can have a positive or a negative temperature, but you can't have a temperature that's 15 degrees north, or you can't have $20 southwest. All right. However, displacement can be a vector. All right? Distance could also have direction, but then it would be displacement. So basically when we say distance, it doesn't have a specific direction, but can be in any direction. Whereas displacement must have a definite and defined direction. So since speed is equal to distance over time, then speed is a scalar value as well. So speed and distance are scalars, whereas velocity and displacement are vectors. Uh, velocity is a vector, that means it must have direction. Uh, notice for speed, distance over time, velocity, displacement over time. Now you understand what the arrows are all about. So probably the best way to understand the difference between speed and velocity is to look at a couple of examples. So we'll look at three straightforward examples. Example number one, a person walks three meters east and then walks seven meters east. The first part of his motion takes five seconds, the second part takes five seconds. What's the speed? What's the velocity? It always helps in physics to draw a diagram to help you visualize these events. And of course, uh, when you draw this diagram, you sometimes need a frame of reference. And so the, the little compass that we've drawn here is actually telling us that north is to the top of the page, south is to the bottom, east to the right, and west to the left. Uh, three meters east, I would draw a short arrow that is going towards the east, and then add to that a longer arrow of seven meters, all right, also to the east or to the right, and the resultant of these two vectors is, as you can see, 3 plus 7 is 10 meters. So the total distance is 10 meters. Also, though, the total displacement is 10 meters, but you also have to say with displacement what the direction is, and of course, it's to the east. So when we calculate the speed, speed is equal to d over t. Distance over time is 3 plus 7 meters over 5 plus 5 seconds, 10 meters in 10 seconds, 1 meter per second. 
Uh, velocity, however, is uh, 3 meters east plus 7 meters east gives me a total of 10 meters east in 10 seconds, 1.0 meters per second east. Now notice that they both have the same magnitude, that is 1.0 meters per second, but velocity must also include the direction, and this is very important in the next example, which is not quite as uniform as, uh, as this first example. In example number two, the same person, instead of walking three meters east to begin with, walks three meters west, then turns around and walks seven meters east in five seconds. In this case, what's the speed? What's the velocity? Again, drawing a picture helps. Notice in this case, using our frame of reference, our compass, three meters west represents three meters to the left of the page, and of course when we draw the next vector, we should draw that next vector from the end of the first. All right, so where the tip of the arrow is, that's where we put the foot of the second arrow, and the seven meters east goes to the right, but of course, what's our distance, what's our displacement, what's our speed, what's our velocity? The vector sum of these two vectors, three meters west and seven meters east, is only four meters east. So when we calculate the speed and velocity, we have to keep in mind that the distance, which is 10 meters, is different than the displacement, which is only four meters east. So as you can see, this, this first calculation is a distance over time, three plus seven again, over 5 plus 5 again, 10 over 10 equals 1.0 meters per second. On the bottom, we've got 3 plus 7, but the 3 is to the west, the 7 is to the east, and so one of them has to be made negative, and this is an arbitrary decision on your part, which one should be positive and negative. Generally, we make east and north positive, south and west are negative, but you don't have to do that. It's just a sort of a conventional uh, approach. However, negative three plus positive seven gives you positive four. The positive being east means we went a total of four meters east in 10 seconds, giving us a velocity of positive 0 0.25 meters per second, or in other words, 0 0.25 meters per second east. And uh, of course there's your total distance, there's your total displacement. To find the speed we take distance over time, to find the velocity we take displacement over time. And of course uh, as I mentioned, the 0 0.25 positive means east because we arbitrarily assigned east as a positive and west as a negative. Our third example is a little more complicated because uh, it's not just east and west, but we have a two-dimensional type of motion here. A person walks, again, three meters north in five seconds then turns and walks seven meters east. So similar to the first two examples, but this time he first walks north, so let's draw a picture of that. Three meters north, as you can see, north is to the top of the page, and then from the tip of the first vector, we add the boot or the foot of the second vector, and so we have three meters north, seven meters east, the distance traveled is 10 meters. The displacement is from where we started at the bottom of the blue vector to where we end up at the right of the red vector. And so our displacement is an arrow that's drawn from the start to the finish. And as you are aware from uh, your uh, studies in math, that that distance is not going to be 10 meters, but is going to be a little bit shorter. And you know that that distance is called the hypotenuse. So what we would have to do is figure out what 
the length of that hypotenuse is. And using some simple Pythagoras, all right, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. We get 3 squared plus 7 squared. 9 plus 49 is 58. So c squared is 58. c is the square root of 58, or approximately 7.62 meters. All right, that's the displacement of the person, but of course, displacement is a vector. Vectors must have directions. So we need to find out what the angle is. And um, I've done a little bit of a calculation here. We can see the speed is still one meter per second. The velocity works out to be uh, 7.62 meters. That's our displacement divided by 10 seconds gives us a velocity of 0 0.762. However, that's not the complete velocity because it doesn't include the direction. So the last step would be use trigonometry to determine the angle of direction. We won't do that right now, but to figure out this angle of deflection, we would use some simple sine, cosine, tan types of trigonometry. All right? And that'll come up a little bit later. As I mentioned, uh, we will discuss and practice the trigonomet uh, trigonometry components required for Physics 30 prep and Physics 30 in later lessons, but the basic requirements are a good understanding of the following. Uh, a right angle triangle is broken usually into three components, the two arms and, of course, the long side is the hypotenuse. And an angle measured with respect to uh, the hypotenuse in one of the arms can be defined in terms of the ratios of the sides will give you what is called the sine of an angle, the cosine of an angle, or the tangent of an angle. And we still use Pythagoras c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Sine cos tan is often referred to as Sokotoa, and uh, this is something, again, this information is usually uh, supplied with the formula sheet in your Physics 30. You're expected to know how to use this, but this is just given as a, as a gentle reminder of some of the basic details of it. And that's it for this particular lesson. We'll look at some practice of these basic concepts of speed and velocity um, in uh, further lessons.